back. Hello. I think I found a mistake. I'm sorry, Hortense. I can't stop. I'm Look, it says up. she's white. Sorry? Mother white. Well, it's perfectly feasible that your mother was white, isn't it? Look, I I'm sorry, Hortense. Really, I've got to go. I'm on an emergency case. Yes, but could this be a mistake? I very much doubt it. Look, give me a ring in the morning and we'll have a talk then. OK, I'm sorry. That was a scene from the Oscar-nominated film Secrets and Lies, in which a black adopted woman in England finds out that her birth mother is white. Joining us now is Dorothy Mazzetti from Columbus, Ohio. She was a teenager when her biological family contacted her, and she was not at all prepared to handle what she found out. What were, tell us. Well, one Saturday, uh, I got a call. I, and this lady was started to ask questions about an uncle of mine and I said who who do you need and she said well do you know a Dottie and I said I'm Dottie and she said well I'm your grandmother I'm your great grandmother and uh, I was I was shocked and she she kept uh, chit chatted a little and she said I have something very urgent to tell you but maybe it would be better if we just kept this between you and me for right now when can you come down can you come down tomorrow and so I made arrangements to come down. I didn't tell my mother. Um, it, it, everything just happened so quick. Uh, I went down the next day. I met my great-grandmother, Dorothy, whom I'm named after. Um, and my brother, I didn't even know I had a brother. That was really a shock, an older brother. And my friend was with me. It was just, it was a total shock. I walked into the middle of a feud. Um, the great grandmother Dorothy was feuding with Alice, the grandmother, mm -hmm. and Donna, the mother. And so she was like, well, we got to keep this secret here and I'll let you see him. I mean, there's just a bunch of secrecy and uh, mm -hmm. a, just a bunch of craziness going on. So your on. story is a lot like Carol's in terms of just finding out, just like, just, there wasn't an agency involved, there no wasn't a formal way, there wasn't a. This was just, hello, I'm, I'm your family hello, I'm here. here, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. So when I say open records to you, what do you say? Do you agree with Carol that... that if it's mutual consent, it has to be mutual consent. Mm -hmm. I can very much understand. At one point, I, I was going to look for my natural family. But it had to be when I was ready. I was 17 years old, you know, I had other things going on in my life. I was totally unprepared. We don't advocate yeah. open records for children. That's something that we take a really hard stand on because parents should have, should have the ability to uh, have an open adoption or not. And this is not about open adoptions. This is purely about adult adoptees who want their genetic and their heritage. We're cut off from our roots. Mm -hmm. So in, in, it's Dorothy, in your mm -hmm. case, you were 17 open records laws would, would not pertain to someone like Dorothy. And to so Carol, like to on, Carol's, on Carol's point, restrain, there are restraining laws, there are, there are um, stalking laws that can cover these very unusual situations. Like and it's important to say, case. this is an unusual situation, <laughs> that there already are federal laws that, that cover this. Carol, what do you want to say? Um, Sorry, basically, Carol. in my case, I wasn't given up for a better life. And thank you to all the birth mothers that so graciously accept the fact that you cannot take care of your child and you give it up for adoption. That's a great thing. But I would like to say I wasn't given up for a better life. I was taken away because these people almost killed me. And for them to have a right to come back and search me out is absolutely wrong. I had a right to choose whether I wanted to see them. But you my had choice a, yeah. was You had a right no. to get a restraining it's order. My yes. no. Then trying to get a restraining order, trying to go out and get all of it this other stuff. It should ruin it for the rest of us who are legitimately looking mm -hmm. for medical and genetic information to have an unusual case like Carol's. And I really do yeah. feel for Carol. Yeah, I would be very angry too. medical information with con contacting mm -hmm. a person. Many times no, we I'm get saying, the medical information to get that address and phone number. We're talking about roots talking about information. Well, Dorothy, when you found this information out you were you did you get to a point where you were thinking about suicide well if you can imagine someone walking up to you and saying hi I'm your mom and this mom expects you to instantly have feelings for her mm -hmm. instantly I had this entire family who'd known me since I was born that I couldn't remember at all and I was supposed to love the brother like a brother. I was supposed to love the mother like the mother. Mm -hmm. 
love the grandma. Uh, these guys were strangers, like somebody walking up off of the street. And pull the whole They're, rug out from under yeah. you and, and put pressure on you to be their family. And I was very upset with myself that I couldn't just instantly, it's like, what's wrong with you? you know, this I, is your mother. I'm very Why distressed you that you've picked two isolated cases here when I have a support group in Morristown where there are thousands of people who well, meet each other. Let me and tell you this, and I know, suicide. and I know probably from your experience, Jane, that there are lots of people who go about thousands. it the right way. But what I find in doing a lot of these shows is that a lot of times when families are separated, they live very close to each other, and who knows right. how they can meet? Sometimes an agency doesn't get You're involved. Right. Sometimes just circumstance does. Right. So we need yes. to be really prepared. We need to have this, our information. That's right. That's the story. This man is from St. Paul. He has a reason why he believes. Open records should remain open. Is that right? We're going to talk to you when we come back. Also coming up, a woman who says that opening adoption records will scare off pregnant women who want confidentiality. And women may start turning to abortion under those circumstances. So we'll talk about more of this when we return. I'll get right to you.